Hey guys, it's Carolyn here. I'm going to make a short disclaimer for the people in the back that I am a vlogger, blogger, influencer, video creator, social media influencer that works with many, many publishers and I have done so since 2010 about. So these are some books from Random House and subsidiaries of Random House, like Penguin Random House Publishing and uh, Candlewick Press that I'm going to show you for Earth Day. These books were sent to me to promote as they have, and that's probably why you hear Jimmy say I have so many books over the years. I love books, can't help it, I love books. These books are great. Okay, so let's take a look at some of them that are available for purchase. I will put links in the video description if you want to purchase any of these books. This is a Candlewick Press book, which is a division of Penguin Random House. This is Kids Fight Plastic, 52 Missions to Help Save the Oceans. It's written by Martin Dory. It's illustrated by Tim Wesson. How to be a hashtag two minute superhero. So inside this book, you'll find, kids will find all different ways to fight plastic in their backpacks, to fight plastic in the park. So it will give them little missions. So what it'll tell them, for instance, for the backpack is that pens can be recycled, chips, you could send the bags back, your water bottle, you know, use a water bottle instead of the disposable uh, plastic water bottles you know, trail of waste between 1950 and 2005. BIC, one of the world's biggest makers of pens, sold more than 100 million plastic ballpoint pens, and that's enough to draw a line to the moon and back more than 320,000 times. So yeah, this is a great, this is a great book. Fight plastic in your closet, fight plastic on the weekend. Okay, the fight plastic party. So lots of great ideas for kids for Earth Day. Okay, these can be used in the classroom or at home. I love big books and get the big books in there. Bruno the Beekeeper is a honey primer. Aneta Francisca Holosova, probably said that wrong. And this is a very nice book. This is Candlewick Press as well. And a division of Penguin Random House. Okay, so it says in the heart and soul, Bruno is a beekeeper, but how did it all begin? When he was still a small bear, he enjoyed a carefree life full of mischief and fun, as is usually the case with little bears. Okay, and then it goes on, and it it's really great if you want to use it in the classroom, if you homeschool, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of you were homeschooling or supplementing or just for story time. I love reading books with my kids. I always have, I love books. So here's the hornet moth, got the hornet, the wasp, hoverfly, the fly, the horse fly, I hate those things. Bumblebee, queen bee, worker bee, and the drone. You know what these are also good for? I'm gonna show you a lot of these books. You can photocopy these and decoupage. Really nice. So here's the, I mean, the Metamorphosis of a Worker Bee. Very nice. Luke is always asking like a thousand questions about this stuff. And this is so, you've got the um, diagram, the anatomy of a bee, okay? The life of a worker bee. After about 40 days, she dies. So a worker bee only lives 40 days. Look at the drone and the queen bee. And the queen bee and the metamorphosis of a queen bee it talks about the hive and its parts beekeepers clothing bee parasites and predators the toad the field mouse the hornet the wasp the ant the wax moth the tracheal mite the varroa mite and the swallow okay Late summer and early fall. Let's 
you know. So, I mean, this is just a great book that talks about beeswax, talks about all the seasons and everything, and the beekeeping. Then we have what flowers bloom in summer, and honey harvest, harvesting honey. So really a great book, all about beekeeping. Beautiful illustrations. This is a great book to share. Again, Bruno and the Beekeeper, I will put links in the video description. Next, let's go to this one. Z Grows a Tree, Elizabeth Roosh, and illustrated by Willen Will Hillenbrand. This is also a um, candlelit version of Penguin Random House. So in this, this one, um, Z arrives in the world and the very same day a Douglas fir seedling emerged at the Cooper's Christmas tree farm, right? And this reminds, this reminds me of the greenhouse and uh, especially with the baby. Um, what's that movie, Hand That Rocks the Cradle? Okay, for the first few months, they're showing Z's little tree right there, right? And then Z's tree is planted. She's a little older. She goes to preschool, right? It's her fourth birthday. The tree's getting bigger. Uh, she measures her height. She's playing, you know, every summer it grows and we're seeing the tree grow and Z growing first day of kindergarten. She's pruning it, taking care of the tree. She's getting bigger. She's playing soccer, right? Um, and then the tree, something's happening to the tree, right? The tree is dying, it looks like. So what the heck is happening? She sits out by the tree. She's reading to the tree. The tree is is dying. She's putting a tent on the tree. And uh, now see, and it also gives you what's here. Douglas fir enters a period of inactivity in the winter called dormancy. They can get quite cold sugars and other substances in their cells to keep them from freezing. But harsh winter winds can cause their needles to dry out and suffer from windburn. So it gives some facts about the trees here. And then that spring, look, the, the tree is, is back to beautiful lush trees. She decorates it, you know, happy ending, further reading. So they give you further reading about trees and there's an index. So that's a nice book that gives you facts and has a nice story. Okay, Creature Feature Ocean. So this is all about um, ocean animals and you get humpback black um, devil, Atlantic midshipmen, very nice colors, really nice. Super shells all about the turtles here and other shelled creatures like the sconce and the candy crab and the giant isopod. Okay, we have spectacular spotted. Okay, so we have the whale shark, kind of a, a beautiful picture of Ethan and Luke by this whale shark and Luke's carrying his um, blanket in the videos too. The narwhal. Okay, we've got a zebra shark, funny faces. And this, because it's a board book, is good for little toddler hands that like to rip pages. So I read to my kids, I, I started reading to my kids in utero, loved it, um, and read to them, you know, even as tiny babies where someone might say they can't understand anything, I read, love books. Amazing arms and my kids, especially my first three kids love books so much. It's like, it was better than a toy store. I mean, voraciously love books. My little guys here, they like books too, um, but there are more uh, particular about, you know, very certain topics they like, but um, yeah, and just because there's so many distractions in today's world, but they love books. You can go anywhere with a book, right? Take it to any place. 
So this is stylish stripes, fantastic fins, terrific teeth, bold black and white, and then you're going to have snazzy spikes. And enormous eyes. And there's the colossal squid. So that's a nice book. And this is also uh, Candlewick Press. Okay. Now, love these big books. Love these big books. This book is so nice. Um, we would love this book. He loves plants. Crazy. So look at this. You've got this nice table of contents. This is great. <laughs> I always think even like when I was playing school as a child, my gosh, I would love to have these books. If it's like playing school, I would have them set up on an easel and be teaching my stuffed animals who I read to as well. But look at these illustrations. Look at that. Look at the colors there. Again, imagine decoupaging that. So the wonderful world of plants, the world plants. They're marvelous things. I'm sure you'll agree, though you may be surprised to find out just how marvelous. But can you say exactly what a plant is? And tell us the all stuff. And like I said, you know, this is good for Luke and Ethan's age. This is, look at this. This is the photosynthesis, you know, that's being taught in seventh grade, fifth, sixth, you know, it goes towards fourth, fifth, sixth, it goes right on up to uh, high school. They just keep expanding it. But look at this, right? The most important reaction, photosynthesis, gives really nice diagrams, okay? Look at this, cycling carbon, the carbon cycle, right? And then the plant family tree we have, conifers, water lilies, magnolias, monocots, other flowering plants. The secret life of flowers and the fertilization of flowers. This is all stuff that the kids are learning in science. And then birds, bees, bats, and pollen. So, you know, you have bee pollination, carrion fly pollination, bird pollination, wind pollination, bat pollination. And we have seeds, three types of seeds. Gorgeous how seeds are spread. The life of a fern, spores. We learn, we'll learn about spores in another book over here too. How plants spread. This is, you know, some people, some people may not know this, okay? And uh, this is, you know, has information maybe some of you don't even know or I mean, would <clears throat> like to read about. Anyway, um, the fight for light, how trees work. Tall, taller, tallest trees. Climbing plants, sprawlers, clingers, and twiners. <clears throat> the chemical plant, plant hormones. We have wood wide web, plants that eat animals like the fly paper, the pitfall traps, the snap traps, the bladder warts. Luke loves this kind of stuff. Plants that steal. What do you mean plants that steal? Well, they're parasitic plants, right? What kind of plants are parasitic? Learn about them. The scientific name for some mistletoe means thief of a tree in Greek. Did you know that? Photosynthesis is a basic feature of plants, but some species have mostly or even entirely given up on it, and they become parasites relying on other plants to make their food for them. Parasites. We see that in the YouTube world when uh, certain creators don't want to make their content and use other people for their content to talk about them, right? And to bully them and harass them as their content. Those would be parasitic YouTube creators. These are parasitic plants. Okay, I digress. Plant defenses. Plant defenses what kind of plant defenses they can have spikes on the inside spikes on the outside mimicry okay to tolerate being bitten calling for help and hosting defenders the lives of plants so we have the, the life of a plant 
Okay, Kinds of Soil. This is just a great, great book. 16 Kinds of Cacti. Aquatic Plants. Plants. Look at these lake plants, right? You've got your reeds, mangroves, seagrass, reed seagrass beds, layers of a tropical rainforest. Okay, shrublands of Mediterranean ecosystems, the plants that feed the world. So you've got your wheat, your potatoes, your sugar cane, your bananas. Growing for the future, a permaculture garden. Okay, sacred plants. You know, what are the sacred plants? Many religions have their own sacred plants. Okay, so we've got sacred figs, uh, Boswellia, which pr produces a resin known as frankincense. And that, remember, the wise men carried that, right? Mistletoe, okay? Sacred bamboo, basil, native to Asia, sacred in Hinduism. The yew, the lotus, the bay, the kopak, the four species used in the Jewish celebration of Sukkot, willow, date palm, myrtle, fruit of the citron tree. We've got lots of things here, and here's collecting plants, right? Lots of plants, gives their tropical plants, kinds of orchids, breeding plants, okay? And then plants in peril, right? These are plants that need help, okay? And again, this was written by Martin Jenkins and James Brown. Discover amazing facts and marvel at what plants can do. Now our last book, look at this, I love it. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Again, another one that you can find a lot of decoupage items, look at that. So, so beautiful. So welcome to the museum. Again, this is a, um, this is a Candlewick, yes, press, Division of Penguin Random House. This is illustrated by Katie Scott, and it's written by David L. Hawksworth, Laura M. Suze, Pepin W. Guige, Carr Limitan, Tom Prescott, Lee Davis, and Esther Gaia. Bungie are probably the least known and most misunderstood organisms on Earth. More closely related to animals than to plants, they are critical to the maintenance of our food supply, health, ecosystems, and global atmospheric chemistry. They also exhibit an amazing variety of adaptations and forms. So we have all of this coming in here and welcome to Bungarium. We've got these great illustrations of everything here. Um, hang on one second. We have the tree of life, fungal biology, what is a fungus, sexual reproduction, asexual reproduction, spores, growth. It's going to talk about the, um, the blue mold on an apple. Okay, so it says blue mold, rot, fungus on apple, toxic black mold. And I'm going to talk about that. Look at this beautiful ecosystem, mountains. Okay, really pretty. Fungal diversity. Cup fun fungi. Um, mushrooms and toadstools. Now you know what these are. These are the bracket fungi, and uh, those are the ones that you write on. We have them here, and you write them, you write on them, the kids' names, and you have them for years. Beautiful things. And look at this, more beautiful illustrations, folliculus fungi, and temperate forest, fungal interactions, it doesn't sound good, but um, networks, look at these root systems here, Vikings. Ants and termites, and giant humans, early mycologists, plant pathogens, 
poisonous fungi, edible fungi, so this is important, edible ones, right? Wonder drugs, important, very important wonder drugs, tropical rainforests, and that's it. You get your index, everything you can look up. And so those are our Earth Day books. Earth Day is coming up. We, it's uh, April 22nd, so check out these books. I'll put the links in the video description if you'd like to purchase any. Um, you can go easily and get them right on Amazon. I will talk to you guys later. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.